الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين العاقبة المتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد I'm going to tell you a true story that happened One of the great scholars of Medina in his time Sheikh Muhammad Aman al-Jami rahimahullah from the teachers of now uh, some of the mashayikh that are alive today Sheikh Muhammad Aman al-Jami rahimahullah was explaining the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ad-deenu nasiha the hadith of Abu Raqayyata Tamim al-Dari which is Zahim Muslim ad-deenu nasiha ad-deenu nasiha ad-deenu nasiha قلنا لمن يا رسول الله قال لله ولكتابه ولرسوله ولأئمة المسلمين وعامتهم فايف الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said the religion is advice religion is advice religion is advice they the sahaba said to whom or message of Allah he said to Allah توحيد the first advice is what to Allah توحيد to his book, the Quran, to his messenger, his sunnah. Tawheed and sunnah, together. You want advice? Good advice? Salvation? Rectification? Tawheed, sunnah. And the advice is to the leader of the Muslims. Number four. And number five, the advice is to the general folk, the general people. Shaykh Muhammad Amma was given explanation of this hadith in Masjid al-Nabawi. I have the tape. And when he came to the leaders of the Muslim, he said, this is the way you give advice. Not openly. According to the way of the Rasul advice, secret advice between you and him. Hadith Musa Muhammad Ahmad. Whoever wants to advise the ruler, don't do it openly. Uh, meaning, one to one. Shaykh Muhammad al-Man, rahimahullah, when he's given the explanation of this hadith, the takfiris, uh, they started fighting him. In where? In Masjid al-Nabawi. Raising their voices, they want to hit him. What is he doing? He's, he's, he's going through the hadith of Rasulullah s.a.w. They don't want to hear it. So they raise their voices. Because they are rowdy people, chaotic people, all over the place. Hadith Rasul, you are in Masjid al Nabawi. And I have the tape. Shaykh Rabbi Jazallah Khair, he did the same hadith in one sitting. He taught it. Alhamdulillah, we attended it in Makkah. Masjid Imam Subail in Makkah. The Masjid where the Dawrat are. Beautiful explanation. It's been transcribed into a little booklet. Religion is advice. Adinu Nasiha. And Shaykh Rabbi Havudra explained that the opposite of advice is to cheat, is al ghish, to cheat. So the takfiris, they are cheating the ummah because they don't give advice to what Allah's messengers has given advice to. And that is to tawheed. If you don't start your da'wah with tawheed, you are cheating the ummah. Whether you are jama'at, tabligh, ikhwan, all the cheating the ummah. Because ad dinu nasiha. Ad-Dinu Nasiha. Ad-Dinu Nasiha. Qulna liman ya Rasul. Qala lillah. That's the first advice. It is to Allah. To worship Allah alone. To maintain His oneness in His Lordship. Rububiyya. In His worship. Uluhiyya. And Asma'u Sifat. By affirming that which Allah and His Messenger have affirmed. For Allah's beautiful names and attributes. Religion is advice. To Allah. Not to yourself, to Allah. To the Quran, to the book of Allah, and to the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu These two, you'll never go astray if you hold on to them. تَرَكْتُ فِيكُمْ أَمْرَيْنَ مَا إِنْتَ مَسْتَكْتُمْ بِهِمْ مَا رَمْ تَضِلُّ بَعْدِ أَبَدَ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّتِي And with that, you can't understand them. Uh, except that we go back to the way of the Sahaba. Then. There are some clear verses and some clear hadith. Eat with the right hand, don't eat with the left. Shaitan eats with the left. Of course, that's understood. But those things, uh, 
We have to, that are not understood, we go back to the rasikhun fil ilm. And those things that are, there is clarity, we go back to the sahaba radiyallahu the rasikhun fil ilm. We are firm in their understanding, because Allah said in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 137, وَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ Another proof for ijma'ah. And if they believe as you, sahaba, believe, فَقَدْ اِهْتَدَوْا Then they will be guided. You want guidance? Take the sahaba. This guidance. Their aqidah, their manhaj, uh, is the same as the manhaj and aqidah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When they unite, it is deen. وَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِهْتَدَوْا Another proof of ijma'ah. كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ You are the best people who have come out for mankind. Ikhwan Muslimin, they love to put this verse out. Big slogan, referring to themselves. We say to them, finish the verse. تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ You enjoying the good. وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And you forbid the evil. What is the greatest good? A tawheed. What is the worst evil? A shirk. But you don't do that. If the, uh, in Egypt, as one of the scholars mentioned, when the, uh, when the, in Egypt, when they got the, how did they get the ruling? The Ikhwan Muslimi. By what? By way of demonstrations and chaos, violence. Tahrir Square, right? Freedom Square, they call it. I don't want to go out, <laughs> uh, demonstrate, and chaos, even some people get killed. That's how they got into power. And the same power was removed from them by their way, by demonstration and violence. Is this the way of Al Islam? Did Sahaba demonstrate? Did they do khuruj, go out against the Muslim leaders like that? Did they? No. We mentioned to you Anas bin Malik, what he said. Likewise, beautiful statements from Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, that I'm not going to open the door to fitna of khuruj, of going out against the Muslim rulers with the tongue and sword. This is the way of the khawarij. Khwan Muslimin, huh? what is it they, 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 com- they compromise the deen of Allah to get power. Their leader, Muhammad Mursi himself, he, as Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi al-Madkhali quoted, he said that these laws, these penal codes of Islam, of cutting the hand if you steal, and uh, life for life if you kill, like the murderer and so on, yeah, these are laws based upon that time, and it's not something which is implemented now. It is based upon that time. You see how they compromise? We know that the laws of Allah are for all time. And the laws of Allah are just. And in the Qisas, there is Hayat. As Allah says, in the Qisas, there is Hayat. There is life. Because it's a great deterrent in the sense that the people to keep away from uh, committing murder, they have a deterrent. That's why you find in Saudi Arabia the lowest crime rate, the lowest murder rate in the world. So there is life, security for the people who follow this great law of Islam. And if the family of the deceased, of the murdered individual, want to forgive, they can forgive. Look how Islam, Allah shows how much compassion there is in the deen of Allah. If they want to forgive and accept blood money instead, they can forgive. You see? There's compassion. And there's mercy for the one who wants to show mercy. And for the one who wants to implement that law because of some evil perpetration that has been committed, they can. They, 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 they can. And they insist that no, our son or our daughter has been murdered, also the murderer should get his judgment. The Ikhwan al-Muslimin, this one Muhammad Mursi, what the leader of this Ikhwan al-Muslimin in Egypt, who was taken away from power, therefore... What Islam, Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi said, what Islam is it that you wanted to establish? O oh, Ikhwan Muslimin. You want to establish an Islam that is based upon compromise. And that's why you find him sitting with the Rafidah. And I have it on, 
Huh? I have the videos where they say on the tape next to the Rafida that we benefited much from Khomeini. We benefited much from uh, the Shia and they are our brothers and so on. We ask, what is it that you benefited from Khomeini? Love of Sahaba. Khomeini himself said the reason why the Rasulullah died is because of Aisha poisoned him. What is it that you benefited from Khomeini? The Shia, the Rafida, they cursed the companions. Khomeini himself said that uh, the Surah Al-Baqarah was called Baqarah because of Aisha. So what is it that you benefited from them? Oh, Ikhwan, Ikhwan Muslimin, cooperating in that which we agree upon and excusing each other in that which we disagree upon. So these groups, whether they are Ikhwan Muslimin, Jama'at uh, al-Jihad al-Takfir, they do not follow the Sahaba radiallahu understanding. You find them contradicting themselves. And you find them compromising. They call hukum for Allah, hukum for Allah, but they don't apply the hukum of Allah to themselves. The takfiris, they go around making blanket statements of takfir and concentrating on the leaders when the Rasul said, everybody is responsible. Kullukum ra' Everyone is responsible or a shepherd and every responsible person has a duty to his flock. And he mentioned that hadith, the leader is a, has responsibility. And he will be questioned for that. The husband in his household, the woman in her household, right down to the servant who has a responsibility to the master's belongings and so on. Or to his uh, uh, boss or person who pays him to his belongings. Indeed, everyone is responsible and every responsible person has a duty to his flock. Notice here the Rasul from the leader all the way down to the servant. All responsible. But you takfiri, khariji, you only want to concentrate on the leaders. You only want to concentrate on the leaders. Because of actions that you say, like one of them said to me, he said, oh, but in Saudi Arabia you have riba banks. So the leader has made, is, is, is not a Muslim because of that. We ask you, O oh, Takfiri, we say to you, O oh, Takfiri, yeah, how many Muslims got mortgages dealing with riba? Are you going to call them kuffar as well? Unless, see, Ahl Sunnah, they say, these are major sins. If you deal with riba, it's major sin. But if you deal with riba and you believe it is halal, now we're coming to a point of belief now, aqidah. If you believe to stahil dalik, you make it halal, you believe it is halal for you to do this haram, then you leave Islam. It's called istihlal. The leaders, if this is what is occurring uh, in the Muslim countries, they have Muslim banks, they're not, make, they're not saying, we believe riba is halal. No, we, bring us proof they said this, that we believe riba is halal. None, you will not find it. Because they don't believe that. But, weakness is upon everyone. You'll find people fall into weakness, and fall into deficiency. And that's why Sheikh Salih Fawzan said, we don't say it's perfect here, but alhamdulillah, we implement the sharia. But we don't say it's perfect. People don't want to accept that because of their emotion. They want to criticize. Name me which country on the face of this earth when prayer time comes, they close all the shops and establish the salah. Name me one country in the face of this earth. But yet you find the likes of these individuals, whether it is Usama bin Laden, Dawahri, Anwar, Anwar, which is Muhada, Awlaki, huh? And this one on, who's from the Salafi media, this new one now. Huh? Who say, look what he says, Abu Wali, they call him, the whole world is Dar al-Kufr. He didn't leave anyone out. The whole world. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> the whole world, huh? SubhanAllah. No matter how many mosques of Muslims there are, or are there, he says. If the law is Kufr, and its leaders are apostate, then it's not an Islamic state. Made the Muwahideen establish the hukum correctly. 
So you are you are the muhiddin. Huh? You have gone through. The, you have not established the hukum of Allah in your da'wah. Because none of the scholars used to say this. The Rasulullah said never said that. The Sahaba never believed that. Then one brother said to him, but how about Mecca and Medina? <laughs> he said the same, the name does not change the reality of his ruler. So even Mecca and Medina is Dar Kufr, according to him. Mecca and Medina, Allah. He opposed the hadith of Rasulullah La hijrata ba'd al-fatih. There is no hijra after the fatih of Mecca. That Mecca is, will be Dar Islam. <laughs> and you go against this hadith to say even Mecca and Medina is Dar Kufr. Subhanallah. Mecca and Medina, the Haramain. Mecca, where the, the worship of Allah Azza wa is established. People praying, millions of people coming there for Hajj and Umrah. You call it Dar Kufr? Where are you, Akhi? Where are, from which planet are you from? And they say that this country, and the Western country, they say is Dar Harb. Not just Dar Kufr now. We go to the next level, Dar Harb. And some of them believe Mecca is Dar Harb as well, the place of war, because they have found them with bombs, even in Mecca. May Allah protect us from the Khawarij. They cause so much, so much trouble. They cause more harm than good. You find them killing everyone and anyone indiscriminately. They say we are in Dar al Harb. In this country, they say Dar al Harb, war. So they steal, they are thieves. That's why, we say to, that's why we say to them, the khawarij of the past, if they saw you, they will make takfir of you. Why? Because khawarij of the past, they used to consider major sin, takes you out of Islam. So stealing will take you out of Islam. Major sin. And that's why the khawarij of the past, they will be scared to lie. The khawarij of today, they are biggest liars. If the takfiris of the past, the khawarij of the past, saw these takfiris now, they would make takfir of them. Outright. They would be from the first of those they make takfir of. Dar al-Harb. So they steal from the people with their false credit cards. They look, they're professional thieves. Huh? And you find them also, how's Dar al-Harb? You wake up in the morning, your neighbor says, good morning. Where's Harb are you in? What war are you in? They go in Dar Harb. And that's why they go around planning secretly to bomb, to kill innocent people. Sheikh Muhammad al-Banna we asked him, if we know anyone who's going to do that, is it allowed to go to the disbelieving authorities and, uh, and tell them? He said, of course. Because they are going to bring harm to your society. So yes, O Khariji, O Takfiri, if you're planning any of those evil acts, <coughs> in this country or anywhere else, and we find out, or we hear, we will expose you. Because we don't want to be killed as well, because we might be on that bus, on that train. Because you kill everybody, women, children, innocent, Muslim, non-Muslim. And the Rasul said, in a battle, in a legitimate battle, it's not allowed to kill women and children. You kill everybody. And one of them said to me the other day, he said, no, but you can, there's no problem. There are reports that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, he sent expeditions, and these are just considered to be, uh, like they call nowadays, the, uh, yani, shrap, is it called shrapnel? Uh, just uh, basically, what occurs in a war anyway? Collateral damage. Uh, that's it, collateral, collateral damage. They say this is, this is collateral damage. <laughs> uh, in order to cover the real world, the real world of killing of dying, they call it collateral damage. A'udhu Billah. The Rasul never allowed the killing of women and children, even in a legitimate battle. It's forbidden. It's haram. And we never found Rasul Wasallam, even though he was, he had the most hardship in this life, more than anyone that can imagine. He went through the most hardship, and we never found Rasul Wasallam putting suicide bomb around him or going and killing himself in a suicide operation. He never did that. He was patient. Because Islam will only come by way of Islam. Islam is justice. Islam is mercy. 
Islam is not oppression. Killing women and children like the shoe bomber he wants to blow up the whole plane. Could be Muslims on that plane. Innocent women and children, innocent men. We've got nothing to do with any war or anything that you are trying to shout about. We've got nothing to do with anything. Just invite them to Islam, ya akhi. This is what the Rasulullah used to do. When he used to write letters to various leaders, he would say, Bismillah ar rahim from the Messenger of Allah to such and such, the leader of such and such. Yeah? And he would invite them to Islam. <coughs> First and foremost, that's his da'wah. لَإِنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرُ لَكَ مِنْ حُمْرِ نِعَمْ He said to Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله عنه and those with him if, any, if Allah were to guide through you one man is better for you than the red sheep camel one person to accept Islam subhanAllah this is khair khair upon khair you just want to kill him you want to just kill him to the, you want to kill to the last drop of blood Rasulullah da'wah was not like that sometime yes he fought. And sometimes he was doing peace treaties. He had peace with the Jews in Medina. For anyone that would come out and try to attack Medina, they would agree to defend Medina. Yathrib. He had peace. The peace treaty of Hudaybiyah. Again, with the Mushrikun. A treaty. That was khair for the Muslims. Allah called it Fath. Inna fatahna laka fathan mubina. That was revealed because of a peace treaty. It was victory because many of the non-Muslims became Muslim. Allahu Akbar. They became Muslim. Why? Because the hujjah of Islam is strong. Go around killing. 7-7, 9-11. Killing innocent women and children. Oh, but brother, there is a narration, they say. There is a narration of... The narrations that you are talking about is talking about a battlefield. We're not in a battlefield. We're not in a battlefield. And bring me one narration where you're allowed to kill Muslims. Because some of those were Muslims that died in 7-7 and 9-11. And we as Muslims, we say it's not allowed to even kill non-Muslim. Huh? In 7-7 and 9-11. We're not allowed. It's haram to kill a Muslim. And it is also not allowed to be unjust. It's haram to be unjust to the non-Muslim. To cheat them. To deceive them. It's haram. And you have come into this country, or you are in this country, upon a trust. We live here upon a trust. Not upon deception. Upon a trust. A Muslim fulfills his trust. Allah says, Awfu bil Establish your trust. Fulfill your trust. We don't live a life of deception. We live a life of truthfulness, of being truthful, of being sidq, of having sidq, of being sadiq with the people, Muslim and non-Muslim. If the non-Muslims knew the beauty of Islam, they would become Muslim. And how many have become Muslim? We live a life upon truthfulness, upon justice, upon adl. As Shaykh Na'taymiyyah, when we called him, we were in Birmingham at the time, this was about 15 years ago, or maybe longer, maybe 17 years ago, we called him and said, Ya Sheikh, what's your advice in living in the land of the non-Muslims? Yani we are here, people living here, we have neighbors who are not Muslim. He said that you be honest and truthful to them. Honest and truthful. And you live side by side, calling them to Islam with your actions, before your speech, da'wah. You want to just go around killing Bombs with nails. What are you? Barbaric. Backwards. That's why the Khawarij, they now bring a day of goodness. They bring much harm. In every time and in every age. Don't be surprised they're on 7-7, on 9-11 killing, or the shoe bomber, or the underpants bomber, whatever you want to call them, because they come in different shapes and sizes. Huh? Don't be surprised that they are killing innocent people and Muslims and non-Muslims innocently. Huh? Uh, 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 innocent people. Don't be surprised by their evil acts. Oh, it wasn't them, it was planned. It was a... Uh, what do you call it? Conspiracy. Uh, conspiracy. <laughs> so many conspiracies. Don't be surprised that they can do this. 
these khawarij because they killed Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. That was not a conspiracy. They killed Uthman radiallahu anhu. That was not a conspiracy. They follow, many of them, the books of Sayyid Qutb. Sayyid Qutb, uh, look how he, when he described Uthman radiallahu anhu, he said the, the Khilafah was Abu Bakr and Umar and Ali. That was the Khilafah, he says. As for the, the, uh, the time of Uthman, it was only a gap. Thulma, he said. It's only a gap. Because the Khilafah that reached, or the leadership of Uthman, he reached him when he was an old man. He's an old man. And he didn't have the spirit of Al-Islam. Ruh al-Islam. He didn't have the spirit of Islam. Who, did, who is he speaking about? Uthman radiallahu anhu. This nafas, this way of speaking, is the way of the khawarij today. It, regarding the leaders. Indiscriminate takfir of all the Muslim leaders. We don't say there are leaders who are not kuffar. There are those leaders who are and scholars have mentioned are disbelievers. The likes of Gaddafi, who Sheikh Abdul bin Baz rahimullah, said he's a disbeliever, and other scholars said he's a disbeliever. Why? Because he said he's got his own green book, huh? which he rules by, and he said that you don't say, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, you just say, huwa Allahu ahad, because Qul is only for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you don't have to say that. You see? Kufr, these are kufr. Huh? So, based upon this and other statements of his, and other points of belief that he held, they said he's not a Muslim. Who said that? Scholars. We don't precede the ulama. And likewise Saddam. They said he wasn't a Muslim. And that was before the Gulf War, not after. They said he wasn't a Muslim. So, because of his Ba'thi belief and his regime, the Ba'thi regime. But you can't go around calling Muslims kuffar, just blanket statement, takfir of all the rulers. You have to be careful. This sharia is the sharia of Allah. This guidance is the guidance of Allah. In al huda huda Allah. It's not, not for you and me to make it up as we go along. We have to be careful. And there are people of knowledge we take their affairs back to. وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يُسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ if they were to take it back to Allah and His Messengers, وسلم, and those in authority over them, the scholars, they would be able to derive the benefits in each affair. But we want to take their affairs back to ourselves and our intellect and our opinion? How is that? We have studied the whole Sharia. So, a whole section here by Imam al Muzani. Al Imsak an Takfiri Ahlil Qibla. We're holding from making Takfir on the people who face. The Qibla. Who are the people who face the Qibla? Muslims. وَالْإِمْسَاكُ عَنْ تَكْفِيرِ أَهْلِ الْقِبْلَى وَالْبَرَاءَةُ مِنْهُمْ فِي مَا أَحْدَثُ مَا لَمْ يَبْتَدِعُ ضَلَالًا فَمَنْ يَبْتَدِعُ And so on and so on. So this great statement of this Imam, Imam al-Muzni, we don't go around calling Muslims kuffar. This is dangerous. Unless we establish the hujjah. I read to you about seven, eight statements of great scholars. All of them mentioned about Iqamat al hujjah We reached up to Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, as a short reminder, as a recap. After Ibn Taymiyyah, who do we have? We have Ibn Al-Qayyim, rahimahullah. What did he say from his students, from the students of Ibn Taymiyyah? What did Ibn Al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, say? And other than him, from his students, likes of Imam Al-Dhahabi. What is it that they said? Ibn Al-Qayyim said, إن العذاب يستحق بسببين أحدهما الإعراض عن الحجة وعدم إرادتهم والعمل بموجبها الثاني العناد punishment is necessitated by two things the first of them is turning away from the proof that is given to you so after the proof is given to you you still reject you are it necessitates that you should be punished Secondly, turning away by rejection. بعد قيامها العناد لها بعد قيامها وترك إرادة موجبها وأما كف وأما كفر آه ال إيش اسمه؟ ما عاد يقيم آه 
He says, then he talks about the kufr of al-jahl. Ma'adami qiyam al-hujjah, wa'adami tamakkun, min ma'rifati, min ma'rifati, min ma'rifati ha, fa'ada al-ladhi nafallahu ta'adiba anhu. As for, uh, the kufr of the jahl, of ignorance. Yeah? And, without establishing the hujjah. Again, he said the same thing, as these other great imams. And, in not knowing its affair, then this Allah negated that He will punish someone because of that, because of being ignorant of the affair, the affair of kufr. He's ignorant of that affair, he is not punished until the hujjah is established upon him. Hatta taquma hujjatul rusul. The hujjah of the messengers is established upon him. And anyway, that is mentioned in Tariq al Hijratain, and it's clearer in another, another of his book, or another book of his. Uh, actually, in the same book, it says, In the Qiyam al Hujjah, Yachtalif al Bihtilaf al Azmina, Wal Amkina, Wal Ashkhas, Fakat Takum al Takum al Takum al Hujjah, Al Hujjah, Hujjah Allah al Al Kufar, or Fi Zaman in Duna Zaman, or Fi Bukatina wa Nahia, Duna Ukhra, Kama Anna Takum al Shaks Duna Akhra. He's saying that it basically times may differ. It may the, the establishment of the hujjah. You have to look at the situation, the place where he's in. Like for example, Saudi Arabia. Someone studying there, tawhid from an early age. Yeah, what excuse he has? That's why when Sheikh Ben Bazar was asked about the rafidah in Saudi Arabia, he said, "What excuse they have to not be Muslim?" All that time he studied tawhid. Love of Sahaba, and then he still says, he still curses Sahaba. He is not a Muslim. And that's why he said, they are not Muslim. If he's in situation, like this situation, he's studying in Tawheed, it's all around him, and he still doesn't accept, that he's not a Muslim. That person may be far away from the ulama, far away from knowledge, and the truth did not, does not reach him. Then what about that situation? Then he... Uh, has to be, the hujjah must be applied on him before you go around calling him a kafir. Anyway, and there's other statements of Ibn al Qayyim, rahimahullah. I'll just give you the quotes so, just so that you can see that he is mentioned, and from that is Tariq al Hijrat saying. Uh, page 414. You can go back there and read it for those who want to go further. And also on page 14. And Imam al-Dahib says that which is similar. فَلَا يَأْثَمْ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا بَعْدَ الْحِلْمِ So no one is sinful except after having knowledge. وَبَعْدَ قِيَامِ الْحُجَّ عَلَيْهِ and, and after the hujjah, the proof has been established upon him. وَاللَّهُ لَطِيفٌ رَؤُوفٌ And Allah is kind and is merciful. قَالَ تَعَالَى وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَدِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا we did not punish a people until we sent them a messenger. And that verse is in Surah Al-Isra, verse 15. وَقَدْ كَانَ السَّادَةُ الصَّحَابَةُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ بِالْحَبَشَةِ يَنْزِلُ الْوَاجِبُ وَالتَّحْرِيمُ عَلَى النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم فَلَا يَبْلُغُهُمْ إِلَّا بَعْدَ أَشْهُرُ And he said the companions in Habasha, in Ethiopia, when verses were being revealed in in Mecca to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they, they did not reach those verses until after months would pass then they will come to them so you're going to say they are sinful the truth did not reach them that's a beautiful proof that Imam Al-Dahabi Rahmanullah mentioned against the Takfiris the truth did reach them it is, you have to establish the proof upon the person does he know or does he not know if he doesn't know how, is he, how can you call him that he is responsible to and call, make Takfir of him how can you do that and rush to perform tafsir of him? That is a Allah, a beautiful faida. That is in Kitab al Kabair of Imam al Dhabi, page twelve. And there are other quotes here from Hafid al Hakami, for example, in his book Alam al Sunnah al Manshura. Again. From him and from other scholars who have followed, like Sheikh Abdul Baz, who said the same. 
إن رأيت أحدا يدعو صاحب القبر ويستغيث به فهو مصاب بالشرك فهل أدعوه على أنه مسلم أم أدعوه على أنه مشرك He was asked If I saw a person who is supplicating to the dead person in the grave and he's seeking help from the dead and he's affected by shirk do I uh, uh, call this individual when if I call him do I address him as being a Muslim or a person of shirk uh, what do I address him with Sheikh Ibn Baz said to him first we'll say Ya Fulan other than don't address him with Muslim or not Muslim. Don't say, oh, mushrik. Don't say, oh, Muslim. First of all, because you're now trying to establish the proof on him. Say, ya fulan. Who is faida? Wallahi faida. Ya fulan. Or you say to him, ya abdullah. Oh, slave of Allah, because we're all ibadullah. Amaluka hada alladhi fa'altahu shirk. Say to him, your action that you're doing is shirk. Wa laysa ibadah. And it is not worship. It is the amal, it is the action of the polytheists, the ignorant ones. Amal Quraysh, for example. وَأَشْبَهْ Quraysh And similar to Quraysh. لِأَنَّ هُنَا مَانِعًا مِنْ تَكْفِيرِ لِأَنَّ هُنَا مَانِعًا مِنْ تَكْفِيرِ وَلِأَنَّ فِيهِ تَنْفِيرِ This is أول ما تدعوه وَلِأَنَّ تَكْفِيرِ المعين غير العمل الذي هو شرك فالعمل شرك وَلَا يَكُونُ الْعَامِلْ مُشْرِكًا He said the action may be shirk, but the person may not be a mushrik. You have to ascertain. فَقَدْ يَكُونُ الْمَانِعْ مِنْ تَكْفِيرِهِ جَهْلُهُ It could be the reason why you don't call him a kafir is because he's ignorant. His ignorance. أو عدم بصيرته or not having knowledge على حد قول العلماء upon the statement of, that is mentioned by the scholars. وأيضا في دعوته بالشرك تنفير and if you call him أو مشرك you're going to be pushing him away فتدعوه باسمه so call him by his name ثم تبين له then you clarify to him أن هذا العمل شرك that this action is شرك see how beautiful that is first you call him أو فلان أو عبد الله to advise him that what you're doing is شرك and he separated between the action of شرك and calling the person a مشرك because here you have to establish the proof on him. Is he ignorant or not? Has the truth reached him or not? That's Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Baz rahimullah. And Shaykh Mir Azim rahimullah naam, says the same. That ignorance is an excuse. Ta'abitun. Fi kulli ma yadinu bihi al-abd rabba. And Allah Azza wa Jal, because Allah said, Inna awhayna ilayka kama awhayna ila nuh. Indeed, we have revealed to you, and we have just as we revealed to Noah and the prophets after him. Until Allah said, Rusulan, Mubashirina Mundirin, messengers. They, they give glad tidings and they, and they warn. Such that the people will not have with Allah a proof by the Rusul after the messages have been given to them meaning they don't have an excuse after the messages have been after the message has been given to them that is in Surah Toba 115 and Shaykh al establishes the same and there are many quotes from Shaykh al-Uthaymin from his Majmu'ah Fatawa uh, volume 3 page 5 and 6 and other than that and the matter is detailed the scholars you find of the past are the same statements they have with the scholars of today. No difference. We started with Imam Bukhari and we ended now with uh, Shaykh ibn Uthaymi rahmallah and other than Shaykh ibn Uthaymi rahmallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who take uh, the advice of the scholars and be careful regarding takfir al muayyan rather takfir muayyan You can't go around calling Muslim kuffar just like that. You have to establish the proof on them. This questioner is asking who is Abdullah Al Faisal Al Jamaiki? He is takfiri, and he made even takfir of himself. And afterwards, he said, when they said to him, "You made takfir of yourself," some tape. He said, "Oh, okay, Ashhadu la ilaha illallah." Then he made the shahada. We say the takfiris day and night. You're making takfir of the leaders, 
How many times do they say the shahada then? It's all right for you, but not right for them, huh? Making takfir of himself. And he even quoted, it's on, it's on, uh, yeah, yeah. on the internet. He even quoted, he said, Ibn Taymiyyah said, Ibn... Yeah, we've just quoted five major quotes from Ibn Taymiyyah. Where Ibn Taymiyyah does not make takfir al muayyan Unless you establish the per- uh, hujjah upon the person. So, Ibn Taymiyyah is not with you. He's against you. Can you clarify the doubt brought by the takfiris and qutubis that Shaykh Mu'thaymin said, do not call yourself Salafi? Shaykh Mu'thaymin, I asked him in Hajj time myself personally, can you call yourself Salafi? And he said to me, <coughs> he said to me, as long as you don't make it into his biyah, this is what is, he, is, he was against. In his answer, that you don't make it into his biyah, partisanship that khalas you salafi and you're in jannah khalas if that's how you use it don't that's not how you should use it but as for ascription then Shaykh Mu'thaymi rahmullah in his Aqeed al-Wasatiyah page 34 he said whoever follows Quran and Sunnah upon the understanding of the salaf then he is salafi so did he say it or not he said it in his book Aqeed al-Wasatiyah that is what salafi is Follows Quran, Sunnah, and they understand the companions, and they understand the Salaf, the righteous predecessors, then he is Salafi. So, Shaykh Nathim, was he against it? No. But what was he against then? He was against using it as his biya, as partisanship. I asked him myself in Hajj. Barakallahu feekum. And Sheikh uh, 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 Al-Bani has a whole tape called Ana Salafi. I am Salafi. And the man, he asked him, how you say you are Salafi? When Allah called us Muslims. So Sheikh Al-Bani said to him, are you Muslim, Sunni or Shi'i? He said, I am Muslim, Sunni. He said, Sheikh Al-Bani asked, are you Muslim, Sunni? Upon the way of the Salaf? Or upon the way of the Ash'aris, the Khalaf, and these misguided groups. He said, I am Muslim Sunni. First of all, he said, I don't want to make Tazkiyah for myself. Shaykh al-Bani said, this is not Tazkiyah. This is you telling, you telling us the reality, the Waqi. Are you following? Are you Muslim Sunni upon the way of the pious predecessors, the Salaf? Or are you upon the way of the Khalaf, Ash'aris? Because... Even they say Muslim Sunni as well. So what, which one are you? He said in the end, after a little discussion, he said, I am Muslim Sunni upon the way of the Salaf. So Shaykh al Allah said, why are you making it difficult for me and you? <laughs> save my, your breath and save my breath. <laughs> Just say Salafi. Wow. Huh? It's like somebody says, where's your air? He says, over there. He goes to the other side, takes his right hand and he goes to his left air. Just say your air is here. Huh? Make easy. Just say Salafi. Because the Ya at the end of Salafi just means I ascribe to the Salaf. That's all it means. I ascribe to the best people. You have no problem in, in ascribing to your country and they have murderers in there and they have thieves and they have innovators and non-Muslims and you say I am Pakistani or Maghrabi or Britani. You have no problem in ascribing to your country but you have a problem ascribing to the Sahaba and their followers. Why oh, you have a problem with that then? And we found those who said that, don't say Salafi, don't say Salafi. Like Abu Ali, I used to say that. Okay, say Alhamdulillah, that's okay for you, yes, because you're not Salafi. <laughs> because afterwards, now he became Su- Sufi. See? They leave holding on to the, to that, to what the ulama are upon. Yeah? And they end up following the way they mix with the Sufis and the modernists and so called intellectualists and they become misguided. Now on his website, yeah, Ibn Jawziya Institute, you'll find he is introducing a hater of the Salafis, a hater of Muhammad Wahab, a hater of the people of Ilm, Abdul Hakim Murad, TJ Winters. 
We saw him on those dispatches program, what he say about Muhammad Wahhab, rahimullah, and the wa- to him the Wahhabis. Huh? We see that the Bugd, they have, they try to say these, these bombings and killings are to do with the Muhammad Wahhab and the Wahhabis. No, they're not. We are against killing innocent people, women and children, Muslims, non-Muslims. This is haram, forbidden. And Muhammad Wahhab, rahimullah, he was against injustice. There was a researcher from America. She wrote a whole book on, and she called it Wahhabism. You know, she is defending Muhammad Wahhab, rahimullah. She said how just he was with even women, with the non-Muslims, with this. And she has a whole book, thick, about 500 pages. Because when I bought it, I thought it was going to be critical. <laughs> she's going to be criticized. She's not even a Muslim. She's going to criticize uh, all the reason for these bombings and killings and is because of Muhammad Wahhab, rahimullah. She started defending him all the way through the book of historical facts of Muhammad Wahhab, rahimullah, how just he was and how good he was to the women and so on. Uh, subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, she found she got the she got it right. A lecturer in one of the universities in America. But this one, he tried to. But look at Abu Ali now. Abdul Hakim Murad wrote a whole book, translated the whole book of Burda of Busayri. It's got shirk in it. So now you are with them now. Huh? First you said don't call yourself Salafi. Now you are with the people of calling to shirk. Translate a whole book of the Burda of Busayri, which the Sufis, they are so proud of it. They love, they memorize. Loving Rasulullah Sallallahu is that you're on Tawheed first. This is if you really truly love Rasulullah Sallallahu Right on his deathbed Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لا تطروني كما أطرأت النصارى عيسى بن مريم ولكن قلوا عبد الله رسول Don't over exaggerate in praising me. Just like the Christians over exaggerated in praising Isa ibn Maryam. Say I'm a slave of Allah and his messenger. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Calling to Tawheed right on his deathbed. If you really truly love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Then be upon Tawheed. And from the lines of poetry in the Burda of Busayri is And from your knowledge O message of Allah is the knowledge of the pen and the preserved tablets. You need the knowledge of the whole unseen, past, present, future. That's the knowledge of Allah. That's shirk. Clear shirk. When I said to a Sufi, look at this. This line of shirk in there. He said, no, but you, you know, well, they don't really mean that. What they mean? He said, look, yeah, we don't play games. That's what's apparent. What else can you, how else can you twist it? You can't. Wrong is wrong. And you have to reject the shirk. Wrong. Shirk. Can't compromise with shirk. So alhamdulillah, we have, we are not a pro- we have, we have no problem in saying Salafi. Because Salafi means ascribing to the best of the people, the Sahaba. And Ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah mentioned in volume 4, page 149 of Majmu'a Fatawa, he said, لا عيبا لمن أظهر مدهب السلف اعتز إليه There is no harm, no shame. On the one who ascribes to the madhab of the salaf, the way of the salaf, and he ascribes to it. There's no shame, no problem. And later on he says, It is obligatory to accept that from him. It's obligatory to accept that from him. Because he said, The way of the salaf is not except truth. The way of the salaf will only be truth. Yeah. Fen, what, what you want, which line do you want me to read? That's two, three lines. Uh, this one is yeah. That's the one I quoted. Yeah. Page thirty-four. Yes, I remember reading it. فأهل السنة والجماعة هم السلف معتقدا حتى المتأخر إلى يوم القيامة إذا كان على طريقة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحابه فإنه سلفي. بارك الله فيك. That's the one I quoted. Page thirty-four. We quoted it and memorized it. Why? Because people are lying against Shaykh Ibn Rahmullah. I saw him in Hajj. And we, we attended his explanation of Surah Nasr. 
He was explaining that hadith, that ayah, that surah, in his in his tent. Beautiful Sheikh Alim, Sheikh Muhammad al Banda used to say he's the Shafi of this Ummah, his great Imam. That people now they say, oh, we well, are his students, but they oppose him. No, you can't be his student and oppose him and say I'm his student. And beautiful manners, and take care of his time. He visited us in our tent, and the brothers who went to bring him, they were late. And he had, he said, he said, I've only got three minutes for you. <laughs> uh, and his, his watch every 15 minutes is, is, beep, is uh, beeping. You'll hear it in his talks. Every 15 minutes or so, did it, did it, did it. That's how taking care of his time. Every 15 minutes, he's checking the, what he's got to do. And you see that with Sheikh Abed as well, always checking his watch. What time is it? What time is it? Always checking his watch. Huh? Sheikh Abed says, I have three minutes for you because I have to be back. Uh, we promised them to be back. It's your fault, not my fault. You came late. You brought me late. I've got three minutes. He's, he's literally spoke three minutes and then he left. <laughs> That's the tent. So we followed him to his tent. So it's Nasr. Look how beautiful man is he has. Rahimahullah. Man came into his tent, rough, harsh. Ya Sheikh! Mata Rajam! He said, Ya Sheikh. Oh, Sheikh, when is the Rajam? You see, Rajam is not Rami. We call it Rami. Rami is throwing the pebbles at the Jamarat. Rajam is throwing the stones at the Zani and the Zaniya. The fornicator and the fornicatress. Yeah? Sheikh Nathayim Rahman said, Don't say Rajam, say Rami. What did this stone do? Rajam is for fornicator and the fornicatress. What did this stone do? Beautiful manners, Allah. When see him in, in Unayza, rahimahullah, we saw his students. All of them got their mats around Sheikh Mirtaymi like this, in a circle form. The best students at the front with their book. Huh? Right, maybe 15 rows of prayer mats. Students come in. We attended, that was, that was beautiful, Allah, that, that time. We, uh, he was doing the hadith of Isra al Mi'raj. And alhamdulillah, Jum'ah. We asked him, Can we sit with you? He said, After Jum'ah. After Jum'ah is answering questions, marriage, divorce, usually. And anyway, there was, I noticed one student didn't have his book. Sheikh Mu'atheem noticed he didn't have his book. He said, Where's your book? He said, oh, I got busy, I got it. He said, Go to the back. <laughs> the skin, he was near the front row as well, you know. He has to start all over again. So look at the, as well the hirs he has for knowledge. Sheikh Mu'taymin rahimahullah. Sheikh Mu'taymin, he explained the books of the Salaf. And you're saying to me that he is against calling Salaf, saying that you should, uh, that you, calling your name Salafi. He, he was explaining the books of the Salaf. And the books of Mu'taymin rahimahullah, which called to the manager of the Salaf. And Muhammad Wahab Rahmullah, which called to the manager of the Salaf, he explained these great books. What is it that he is upon then? Sufi, Tablighi, Khwani, what is it that he is upon? He is Salafi. What is it that he is upon? He is Salafi. And Shaykh Ibn Baz Rahmullah the same. And Shaykh Salaf Ozan, when they asked him just recently about the Salaf, he said, Naam, we are Salafi. We are Salafi. Nahlu Salafi Jun, he used it in the plural form. We are Salafis. Now they say, don't say Salafis. Huh? He said in the plural, Nahlu Salafi Jun, and we are happy with that. Why is the problem? It's the question you can't deny. Sheikh uh, Ibn Taymi Rahman said, you have to accept that from him. You can't deny this question. If you say, are you Salafi? You can't say no. Because if you say no, it means I'm not following the way of the Salaf. So it's a question you can't even deny. If you deny it, that means you have strayed. But you can say, I'm not Sufi. And you can say, I'm not Tablighi. And I'm not Ikhwani. And I'm not Takfiri. But no one is allowed to say, I'm not Salafi. You can't deny that. You can't say, if somebody asks you, are you Salafi? You can't say no. And this is true. If it's true, khalas, then you're not Salafi. A sister is asking, what does Salaf mean? And who is Salaf? And who is Salafi? 
Salaf means the ones who came before us. Salaf was salih, the ones who came before us and they are pious. The best of the people. The Sahaba, the Tabi'een, the Tabi Tabi'een. The companions, the successes and their successes. The Rasulullah said, did he use the word Salaf? Yes, he did. He said to Fatima, his daughter, radiallahu anha, Ni'ma Salaf ana laki. I'm a blessed predecessor to you. I am confused and would like to know why we don't just call ourselves Muslims. Yes, we just said, call yourself Muslim. But are you Muslim, Sunni or Shi'i? You're going to say Sunni. Did Allah say that in the Quran? No. Muslim, Sunni, upon the way of the Salaf or the Khalaf. Then Alhamdulillah, the permissibility is found in the books of the scholars and is found in the statements of the scholars, past and present. Imam al dhabi in Surah Al-Mudubala, when he mentioned Abdullah bin Barak, Rahimullah, who died 110 Hijriya, Abdullah bin Barak as Salafi, he said. It's found in the books of Salaf, there's no problem. The, the scholars used it. Abdullah al-Barq al-Salafi. Awza'i. What did he say? Alayka bi athar al-Salaf. When you used to hold on to these statements of the Salaf. Huh? Even if the people were to abandon you, he said. So there's not a problem here. We don't, have, we don't shy away from, from something which is already established in the books of the scholars. Something which is clear. It's not something new. Assalamu alaikum. What do you advise about the situation in Syria? This is not for anyone. It's for the scholars. And they've already spoken. Sheikh uh, Ubaybi asked him in the conference in Birmingham recently. And he said, first of all, he said, this is not affair for anyone. Because bloodshed. It's an affair for the people of knowledge to speak about and I he said advise that you go to the people of knowledge to speak to, to ask them about this yani yeah, the ones who are uh, great scholars this is from his humility uh, humility to ask and to refer them back to the great scholars the ulama of the sunnah the likes of Sheikh Salif Uzan and Sheikh Lahidan and Abad and Din and Sheikh Abay said it doesn't mean that we don't speak the truth regarding the affair and the scholars have already mentioned that you don't bring about a greater evil to change an evil. If you want to change an evil, don't bring about a greater evil. Sheikh Abdul Rahman al-Sadi rahimullah mentioned that. وَإِذَا تَعَدَّدَ عَدَدٌ مِنَ الْمَصَالِحِ يُقَدَّمُ الْأَعْلَى مِنَ الْمَصَالِحِ وَضِدُّهُ تَزَاحَمُ الْمَفَاسِدِ يُرْتَكَبُ أَدْنَى مِنَ الْمَفَاسِدِ Takfir is they don't know this principle. They want to make change even if it brings about greater evil and more bloodshed. The Rasulullah Sallallahu Sunnah is you don't bring a greater evil, change an evil to, great, uh, to create a great, great evil. The man who came to urinate in the mosque, imagine all the places there are, he came into the masjid to urinate. He was new to Islam. The Sahaba ready to throw him out while he's urinating. The Rasulullah Sallallahu said, wait, wait, let him finish. And when he finished, he said, get water to pour it over that place. Look at the mercy of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi how merciful he was. Sheikh Ubaid said three benefits. Why he didn't change that monkar there and then? You see? Monkar is urinated in the mosque. If you see someone do that nowadays, these, these takfiris, they'll make takfir of him. Rasulullah was patient. Number one, he said he was new to Islam. If they had thrown him out there and then, he would have probably left Islam. That's even greater monkar, isn't it? Number two, the urine is only in one place. If they threw him out there and then, the urine would go everywhere. Greater monkar, yes. Number three, his aura would have been seen. His private parts would have been seen. Isn't that a greater monkar? Yes. O takfiri, o khariji. You want to change an evil and you create a greater evil. You want to go out against the leader, even if he's not a Muslim, like Bashar is a kafir. 
Scholars have already mentioned he's a disbeliever, Alawi. But even if he's not a Muslim, you can't go around trying to remove him if you can't, if you're going to create a greater evil. You don't have the strength to remove him. And the proof is now, you can see, they didn't have the strength. Because look at the bloodshed, the killings of innocent women. Who loses out? Women, children, babies. Now they use chemicals. Look at that. You want to change an evil, but you create a greater evil. You see? May Allah protect us. So the situation, go back to the ulama, ask them for this refers to, this is considering a lot of bloodshed, a lot of killing, a lot of harm. This is not for the layman to answer. The takfiris, this is the first thing they will answer. And these are the things they're speaking about on the manabir, based upon ignorance. How do we give aid, yani, for uh, male and females going over there, yani, to Syria? Through the proper channels. Don't be careful, because now, you don't want your money to go to the wrong hands. So be careful. In a situation of chaos like this, you have to be careful. You have to go through the proper channels. And as for this, uh, the third question about the fighting there, then is the flag clear? There are people killing each other. If the fa flag is not clear like in Iraq, the flag, it wasn't clear. So the scholar said, where are you going to fight? Who are you going to fight then? You're going to be Muslims killing each other. So if the flag, flag of Tawheed, and the, runner, the banner of La Ilaha is not clear, we don't go into a chaotic situation. The Muslims are in, in Egypt as well. What did the scholar say about that? They stay in their home, away from turmoil, and away from adding to the, to the evil. Don't change an evil to create a greater evil. The manhaj of Al-Sunnah is known about these affairs. May Allah protect us, and aid the Muslims away from this turmoil that is affecting the Muslims. And they will only be given security if they go back to Tawheed and Sunnah. The, uh, Surah Nur verse 55. See, our da'wah doesn't change. We're not, we're not changed da'wah in the manhaj. Huh? based on politics or political events we're not socialists see socialists every time something happens they go out and march we're not socialists we're Muslim alhamdulillah we have manhaj and that manhaj is Surah Nur verse 55 وَعَدَ <laughs> You want security? You want khilafah? Go back to ibadah. And go back to... Huh? Go back to keeping... Uh, 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 speaking against shirk. You want security? Read Surah Al-An'am. فَأَيُّ الْفَرِيقَيْنِ أَحَقُّ بِالْأَمْنِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ which of the two groups of people have more right to have security? The people of shirk or the people of tawheed? Who is it? The people of tawheed, they're the ones of security. Security. And they are the guided ones. Who are they? The ones who believe correctly. That's why we are spending time and time on Aqidah. The Muslim belief. And they don't spoil their belief with the shirk. Dhul. What is shirk? What is dhul? The greatest oppression is shirk. As Luqman said to his son, Ya Bunayya, la tushrik billah, inna shirka la dhulmun azim. Great oppression. And third one, I'll give you another verse. The last verse of Surah Al-Furqan. Qul ma ya'ba'u bikum rabbi 
لولا دعاؤكم فقد كذبتم فسوف يكون لزاما قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاؤكم الله سبحانه وتعالى will not come to your aid لولا دعاؤكم لولا عبادتكم if it wasn't for your ibadah it will not come to your aid wherever you look in the Quran it's clear going back to ibadah tawheed and sunnah قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاؤكم يعني لولا عبادتكم a beautiful verse so true Allah Azza wa Jal will not aid you until what? If it wasn't for your ibadah. I'll give you a fourth one. Surah Al-Ra'd verse 11. Inna Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. Allah will not change the condition of a people until they change what is within themselves. Wallahi ya ikhwan, I was reading the tafsir of this by Shaykh Abdul Rahman al-Sa'di. How beautiful that tafsir was of this verse. Look, there's two things here. Allah changing you, your condition, and the the uh, and the people changing what's within themselves. So Allah changing your condition from insecurity to security, or vice versa. He says, Sheikh Abdul Rahman says, he says vice versa. Could be. And then there's the condition of you changing what's within yourself. What have we got to do? And what is it that Allah is going to do? There's two things here. In Allah, لا يغير ما بي قومين. This is what Allah is going to do. He will change their state of insecurity to security. He will give them the khilafah. He will give them, it's not something that you jump up and down about. It's something from Allah that He will give. Because of what? You change what is within yourself. You yourself did what's upon you. Tawheed and sunnah. Because you did that, Allah brought about the change. What do the takfiris, khawarij do? They leave that which will, they leave rectifying that was within themselves, and they concentrate on doing the duty that Allah does, or the, the action that Allah is, does. And that is trying to bring about the change from, of, uh, from above, and the political leaders and so on. Allah is going to do that change, not you. So neither have they concentrated on changing themselves, nor have they brought about that change that Allah will bring. So therefore, they have opposed the verse in two ways, twofold. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aid us, bring us security in the Muslim Ummah, and that we go back to ibadah, tawheed, and sunnah. This is the only salvation. Islam will not come by way of demonstrations. They tried it in, uh, in Egypt and they failed miserably. They tried it in Syria, it failed. They tried it in Algeria and it failed. They tried it so many places and it failed. Islam will only come by way of Islam. Muhammad Wahab Rahmullah did it by that way. Tawheed and Sunnah. And the whole country was established upon security. Allah gave them that security. Walillahi alhamd. Barakallahu feekum.